Good evening. I'm Lauren Gray, and we begin tonight with breaking news. The state is suspending the personalized license plate program. The BMV says personalized plates have come under scrutiny in a recent lawsuit. The state is suspending the program until the lawsuit is resolved. If you currently have a personalized plate, you will be able to keep it and renew it. But the BMV will not take any new applications. Police believe they have solved a two-year mystery with the discovery of a car at the bottom of a Plainfield pond. The car belonged to Morgan Johnson, who was 27 years old when he disappeared in May of 2011. It contained human remains. The coroner, the coroner is working to confirm the identity of the person who died. Johnson was last seen at a motel on Gateway Boulevard in Plainfield in May of 2011. Police found the car in a small pond on Perry Road, just north of I-70. Tonight at 5.30, how sonar technology helped police make the discovery. Fisher's police say they're, they're concerned about the safety and well-being of a missing teenager. 18-year-old Peyton Rekoff was last seen around 3 o'clock yesterday morning near Fall Creek Road and Brook School Road. She left a friend's home in Geist in her black SUV after becoming agitated. Surveillance footage shows her buying gas at the Shell Station near 96th and Olio Road. If you've seen Peyton, please call Fisher's police. Earlier this month, we brought you a story about a 13-year-old from Carmel calling 911 when someone broke into his house. We now have that dramatic call from the boy as he and his sister hid from the burglar. Are you able to lock your door? No. Do you hear someone downstairs or? They're upstairs. Do you hear anybody talking or is it just one person that you can hear? Just one person, I can't hear anyone. Please okay. help, please come. They're, they're on the way. When officers arrived, the burglar jumped from a second story window. He was later found and arrested. The boy and his sister were not harmed. Days after an eight-year-old boy went into cardiac arrest and died from getting hit by a baseball, questions about defibrillators at ball fields are being raised to prevent another tragedy on the field. Dylan Williams of Union City was hit in the neck by a thrown ball during practice. He collapsed and later died Tuesday at Riley Hospital for Children. Little League administrators tell us they're now receiving calls asking questions and about the access and expense of defibrillators. Little leagues such as this, um, you know, it, the money is just sometimes just not there. We do training, we're required to do training, uh, but trying to get the money to spend for a defibrillator is very, very, very difficult for leagues like this. Very few of us can afford it. Doug Otten tells us fundraising is one possible solution of getting defibrillators for ball fields. To honor Dylan Williams, a moment of silence will be held tonight at tonight's little game league, little league game between Eagle Creek and Lebanon, and the flag will be lowered to half staff. A Central Indiana school district is taking security into its own hands. Lebanon schools voted this week to hire two resource officers that will be paid by the district. Officials say they will take over for Lebanon police and patrol both the middle and high school. The program hopes to expand to six officers in the future. And tonight, and only on Channel 13, we take you inside the new Wishard Eskenazi Health. Dr. Lisa Harris gave us the hard hat tour of the new public hospital, which is 30% smaller than the 17 buildings that make up Wishard, and yet has capacity to care for 20% more patients. She estimates that will lead to a 45% savings on energy costs. There are 650 workers still on site, working on the 315 bed private rooms. The new heliport is high on the roof, eliminating the need of ground ambulance currently used for Wishard. She says to create lean, efficient, and flexible space, medical staff worked in the mock-up rooms to test the design. You know, they first walked in and thought, wow, you know, this is huge. It's not going to be like a game of Twister anymore, you know, trying to, trying to provide care. Um, but as they really got serious and got into this, you know, going through a drill of actually resuscitating a critically injured patient, they said, well, you know, this is great, but all the action's at the head of the bed. So this room really needs to be narrower and longer. Perhaps the most unique feature is the Sky Farm, a rooftop garden space that is open to the public. Tomatoes grown in the raised beds will be served in the cafeteria below. Harris says the project remains on time and on budget. She says this is the last sneak peek before December. The patient and care transfer from Wisher to Eskenazi starts December 7th. Those are the headlines making news today. 
Thank you for watching. I'm Lauren Gray.